Hello, back again everyone. So today we're going to be looking at real chords. And what do I mean by real chords? I mean those chords that are not bar chords or power chords, whichever one you want to put it, whichever way you want to put it. So um, real chords to me are what you would use chord patterns for, chord diagrams to figure out where your fingers are going to go on the fretboard for each chord. Um, some of them are quite tricky at the beginning to switch between as well because they're quite intricate kind of um, uh, finger manipulations on the fretboard. So there's some easy ones to begin with um, and there's some tricky ones. That said, sometimes the easy ones are difficult to go between each other because you've got to move your hand a whole lot. Um, but these chords are going to incorporate almost every string for every chord so it creates quite a whole rounded kind of sound. They're all generally within the first kind of three or four frets. Um, and I guess anyone, everyone should learn to play them when they're playing those first kind of tunes. I'm thinking Beatles, Oasis, you know, those kinds of chorded, um, maybe Coldplay, that kind of thing. Those kind of uh, three or four chord tracks that you're strumming away to. So first chord I want to introduce you to um, here is A, start at the beginning, right? So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So, the A chord, here we go. Firstly, a chord diagram to figure out what the A chord looks like um, is a diagram where you have six lines representing the six strings, and then you have numbers on each line representing where to put your finger on each fret. Um, so the A diagram will look like this. Your top string, the sixth string, the E string, won't be played. <laughs> nice to begin with. Um, the next string, the A string, the fifth one, you're going to play open. Okay, so that'll sound like this. Then you've got the fourth string, third string, and second string all on fret two, which we're going to play with our ring finger, our middle finger, sorry, ring finger and little finger um, on the on those strings and then leaving the highest string again open. So going over that again, you've got top string, ignore it, don't play that one. This fifth string open, second fret there, second fret there, second fret there, and then the highest string open also. And it will sound like this. <laughs> Now I'm using my I'm using my thumb here to wrap around the top of the neck, just touching that lowest string, so that so that it's muted. You're not going to get any sound from that then. You can hear that A string going off, but that top one is completely muted. And then we're just strumming with the plectrum through that. And that's your A chord. So that's open or zero, if you like, on this fifth string here. Fret two there, fret two there, fret two there, and then open on the highest one. Now, when you're playing these chords, to begin with, it does feel quite difficult because you kind of think, oh, I've got fat fingers, this isn't working. The strings are really close together. Um, you've got to have a lot of dexterity, etc., etc. But really, again, it's just practice, but also my main tact for this is coming coming from above so swoop down on the strings so you really want to get your hand wrapped around that neck so you're coming from the front of the neck so the idea with this a lot of times you might play a guitar like this you're holding the neck it's natural to hold it this way um, what you're going to struggle with is the fact that if you're holding it that way the the strings your fingers are all interrupting on each string if you wrap your hand around it more, more like a claw, I suppose, um, you're able to come down from above and fret on those strings quite happily. Okay, and that goes with, I would actually say, almost any playing. You do change your hand position sometimes on the neck, depending on what you're playing, and if you're if you're trying to mute some of those strings or if you're trying to play some of them open, so you do move that hand position. But if you are trying to play all of those notes, which in all of these um, chords, kind of real chords, I like to call them, 
um, then you're coming from above. So you do wrap your hand a little bit more around it and come from the top and you're using the, the tips of your fingers on those, on those strings. So that's your A chord. Now, <clears throat> we're going to use a very well-known song, um, the Lonely Hearts Club Band, to kind of hear some of, these, some of these chords. I've got the chord pattern in front of me with some of the lyrics there. So it starts with an A, which is a good place to start, I suppose. Um, the next chord on there, we're going to skip over B, is a C, because these chords work really nicely together. So a C. Again, how do we play a C? So this is a completely different position. We're moving our hand. This is actually, I think, a bit more natural. So a C chord, and looking at a chord diagram again, I've got a few more numbers on this one. Um, and again, the tact is just coming from above. So you've got not playing the lowest string again, the sixth string, playing fret three, which uh, on, the, on the next string, on the fifth string, the A string, which is a C. So that's actually middle C that fret 3 there and then you've got on the next highest string you've got the second fret with my middle finger there so we're using our ring on the fifth string third fret middle finger on the fourth string second fret then we're leaving the next string the third string open and we're playing the first fret on the B string on the second string and then again leaving the top one open. So when you play that, so you have mute, three, two, open, one, open. And that's your C. So we have A, we have C. And then the last one I want to show you, <clears throat> the last one I want to show you is a G. And that's going to get you through um, Actually, I'll show you, yeah, I'll show you that one. That's going to get you through the intro, the verse, if you like, of Sgt. Pepper. So the last one I want to show you is a G chord. So a G chord is brilliant. It uses every string. Um, it's a really nice chord. I love this one. So you're using G on the lowest string, which is the third fret. The second fret on the next one. And finger position is really important with all of these as well. So... Whereas with the A string, we're using, you say, why those three fingers? Why not these three? Why, why those three and not using your index? Because when you move this position up, you can bar. Whereas you're playing open with an A chord, open on the, the lowest string, play the A string and the, the top string. If you move that up, you can bar here now, two frets down. So you're always two frets down, like a power chord. And that gives you a, a major chord. So that's why we play it like that. It's good, good practice, good technique. Um, with the C chord, the only way you could play it is this way with your ring finger at the top because you couldn't possibly you know, get your other fingers behind. You've got to do it that way around. Um, with the G, all will become clear. You play middle finger on the third fret index finger on the second fret of the fifth string then the next the middle two are open and then the the highest two fifth and sixth strings um, sorry first and second strings are on the third fret and play all of those together really nice chord that one and again coming from above especially with this index finger really really having to maybe wrapping your hand around the guitar neck rather than playing it where you're quite rested, means that you're going to be able to get those open strings ringing um, on the middle, the middle two strings. I'm trying to keep all of those fingers out of the way. So definitely if you're new to this, you want to cut your fingernails, definitely have them nice and short, have the tips of your fingers very exposed, um, and just use the tips of the fingers and keep out of the way of all the other strings. And that is why it's so difficult I thought it was so difficult at the beginning to move swiftly between these chord patterns. So you might have something that sounds a bit like this. Um, and that verse.
and there you go. And that's my intro to real chords. <clears throat> the trick to it, chord diagrams, definitely download some. Um, I'll put a link to a bunch of them in the description of this video. And uh, come, come down from above with your chords. Uh, make sure you wrap that hand around and your fingers come down onto the strings and not interrupting on the other strings there. Um, moving between some of those is quite difficult. Um, but again, it's just practicing those patterns um, and making sure you're wrapping your hand around the guitar enough that you're playing all of those strings separately. Um, when you want to mute a string on any of those chords I've just showed you, generally it's the lowest one, and you can do that with your thumb, especially if you're wrapping your whole hand around, including your thumb around the top. So that's my uh, introduction to real chords and chord diagrams, um, chord patterns. Uh, using Beatles Sergeant Pepper as a as a um, stepping stone to that. That said, go onto the internet, uh, Google your favourite song um, with chords after it. So whatever it might be, say it's uh, Yellow by Coldplay. Write in Coldplay Yellow chords, and generally you'll get a um, a screen with all the lyrics written out with the chords above each one, um, and it will just be the chord names like A, G, D. Um, and have a look at the chord diagrams uh, and learn it from there. Just keep practicing, practice, practice, practice. So uh, good luck with it all. Hope it goes well, and I'll see you for our next video, which is going to be all about picking. Um, so we're going to be introducing the guitar pick, talking about strumming and picking. Thanks very much, and see you next time.